AI, the medical revolution. Let's imagine that one day, ten or twenty years from now, you get sick. You feel fine, but your toothbrush doesn't agree. There is an anomaly in your saliva analysis, or maybe the bathroom mirror notices something as it scans your retina, or of course it could be your wristwatch that registers that something is wrong. Either way, you receive an AI-generated message to contact your doctor. Your doctor, you'll be happy to hear, is still human, but these days her medical training is less useful than her AI diagnostic system. It knows your DNA sequence and can compare you with millions of other patients and their DNA. It decides on a prognosis and treatment specifically based on your physiognomy. She sends you for a 3D scan. The AI analyzes it in a thousandth of the time a human could and with greater accuracy. You are prescribed surgery and a new drug. It was designed by an AI program capable of comparing thousands of compounds and suggesting a small number of combinations for clinical tests, saving researchers years of trial and error. The surgeon says that your operation was a success and you're cured. She's pleased with herself, but she didn't do anything except watch as the AI robot manipulated the scalpel, its movements based on the analysis of your 3D scan. Sound like science fiction? Well, apart from the toothbrush, it's already happening. AI is rapidly revolutionizing medical practice, and this is just the start. Great, you say, but for now we're in the middle of the world health crisis. True, but in Toronto there is a medical AI platform called Blue Dot that monitors thousands of data sources, looking for significant patterns. On the 31st of December 2019, it alerted governments and private organizations to a cluster of unusual viral infections. The place, Wuhan. This was nine days before China or the WHO said anything. Maybe next time the crisis won't happen at all. AI: The Social Metamorphosis. This article may or may not be written by a journalist called Rupert Morgan. You cannot know for sure because journalism is an area where AI has already started to replace human writers, and mimicking an individual writing style is easy. In fact, you've probably already encountered AI journalism. Radio France stations Le Monde and other major media sources use it. Sports reports are now often AI generated, but the technology can also produce journalism such as this. Explaining a subject in a clear and informative manner. Of course, we're already used to AI in other areas. We have virtual assistants such as Alexa, Siri, and all those infuriating systems used by banks, telephone companies, and public services to avoid dealing with us on a human level. But the technology is going to penetrate much deeper into our lives in the years ahead, with the rapid development of emotional AI. Once AI is capable of analyzing human emotion and responding appropriately, our relationship to it will change completely, even if we know it is only a computer. Robots that have this capacity are already being successfully introduced as companions and carers in old people's homes in the UK and other countries. They are also appearing as teachers for children with autism and other disorders. Compared to human carers. Of which we don't have enough anyway. The robots have two advantages: they offer constant surveillance and infinite patience. But it will not end there, because emotional AI is a massive business opportunity. Many people already spend more time interacting with their telephone than their family. Now imagine how much more powerful that connection would become once those telephones have emotional intelligence. A telephone that interacts with you like a friend, a telephone that understands when you are anxious or depressed, a telephone that seems to know you better than any real person does. Are alarm bells starting to ring in your head? We urgently need a legal structure for the application of AI, but for now, the technology is moving faster than society's understanding of it. AI: The Military Nightmare. 
The attack is fast, devastating, and it happens like this. It is a calm summer day in Washington, D.C., when a truck parks a few streets away from the White House. Its doors open and a dark cloud comes out. Hundreds of matchbox-sized drones flying like a swarm of insects. They rise into the sky, then head for the White House, locating entry points through open windows and ventilation grids as they approach. As they flood inside the building, individual drones start breaking away from the swarm to target anyone they encounter. Each person is killed by one bullet to the head. The swarm knows the design of the building and converges on the cabinet room where the president is in mid-meeting. Secret service agents reacting to the gunshot sounds charge inside to take the president to safety, but the swarm is moving too fast and flies in behind them. It identifies the priority target and the president is killed, followed by everyone else in the room. This is not science fiction. In recent years, every major military power has been developing AI swarm weapons. They are part of an intense AI arms race between China, America and Russia, who all aim to have autonomous robotic armies by 2025. The US already has AI gunships. China has full-sized AI attack helicopters. And at the end of 2020, Russia tested its AI tanks in the Azerbaijan-Armenian conflict. That conflict was short because Azerbaijan had a massive advantage in loitering munitions, AI drones that patrol high above enemy territory, autonomously scanning for military targets they can attack, exploding on impact. Lethal autonomous weapons are bringing us into unacceptable moral territory, United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres said last year. But attempts by the UN to negotiate a treaty limiting AI weapons have been blocked by the major military powers along with Britain, Israel and Iran. A flash war, an unintentional conflict started by AI, the scenario of Terminator, is a possible danger, but nobody wants to fall behind in the AI arms race. Whoever becomes leader in this sphere will rule the world, as Putin explained back in 2017. Presuming, of course, that there is still a world to rule over.